not saying that it is that I know any way by which you can be 100% free, meaning that you can live exactly the life that you want to live at every moment of every day without any uh, drudgery, uh, without any having to do anything that you don't happen to want to do at that particular moment. But my belief is that it is possible to live 70 to 90% free and that I believe with no scientific evidence whatsoever that most people live in a state of 10 to 30 percent freedom, uh, what Henry Thoreau called lives of quiet desperation, uh, where people are just simply trying to keep out of trouble, trying to keep out of debt, trying to just not get fired, trying to do whatever is necessary not to rock the boat, trying not to have another argument with the spouse, trying whatever it may be, and I'm giving you uh, obviously an extreme example, but you know what I'm saying. And that's another area of the book where I talk about positive choices that we make where we're choosing between two alternatives, each of which we think of as good, and we're just trying to decide which would be the better of the two, or negative choices, where we see that the two choices or more are all bad, and we're trying to figure out which would be the least bad. And too often, people are making, in small ways and in large ways in life, negative choices where they are trying to minimize the bad rather than trying to determine which would be the very best thing, which would enhance my life the most. And I believe that there is a great deal, as I said at the outset, that each of us can do in his own life to make things better. But one of the traps we want to stay out of, which I did not identify uh, so precisely in the book is what we might just call the perfection trap. And that is the belief that this should all work out perfectly, that you should be able to, to do everything right and everything perfectly. I can't tell you how many mistakes I've made in my life. I mean, how many stupid things that I have done in my life, things that I look back on that I'm actually ashamed of and that I hope nobody ever found out about. Um, uh, how many times that I set out to do something and didn't succeed? How many things of that sort have happened? And yet here I am at 68 years old. I have been blessed with what I think is the most wonderful life possible. I've been able to live in three countries. I've had books on the bestseller list. I was given the honor of running for president twice. I am married to the most wonderful woman in the world. And all this in spite of all those mistakes. Because more than anything else, it's an attitude. It is a determination that you are not going to be unfree if you don't have to be. And I wrote the book and titled it, How I Found Freedom in an Unfree World, precisely because first of all, I wanted anybody to understand that I was not talking about changing the world. I was talking about the world that we're living in right now, not that utopia in the future, that we're hoping to build someday, but the unfree world we live in now. And rather than saying how you can be free in an unfree world, I said in a way that would ordinarily offend my own sense of modesty, how I found freedom in an, in an unfree world because I wanted people to know that this had already been done by one person at least. So we were not talking about blue sky. But the point is that despite all these mistakes, despite these things that I'm even ashamed of. I have been able to live this blessed life. And I, and I realized just a few weeks ago that when I die, I want my wife uh, to, to put on my tombstone. <laughs> um, I did not do everything that I wanted to accomplish. I did not become everything that I wanted to be. But because I reached for the stars, I still was able to reach the top of the world. And that's what I'm hoping you will do, that you will not let people tell you you can't do it, but you will reach for the stars. And that you will discover, seek out, identify, and act on that person that is you, who is not Harry Brown, or Bill Clinton, or anybody else, or even the person you admire most in the world, 
That person is you, and you are unlike anyone else in the world. And it is your life, not that person's life. So you have to make the decisions. But if you do make the decisions, you are going to be able to live in a much freer way. And that's what I want for you. I want you to have the very best. I want you to be able to live free in an unfree world. Harry Brown was a libertarian candidate for president in 2000. His book, How I Found Freedom in an Unfree World, is published by Liam Works. They're online at liamworks.com.